Now, let's go to work. In the third chapter of the book of Ephesians, something quite interesting is there. And uh, I want to take it, and I want to lift from the context what I think might be beneficial to those of you who are ch Christians, Christians, those of you who are believers, those of you who are members of the body of Christ, uh, we want to approach it from a different uh, angle. Uh, I've always preached this for, for many years, uh, but I took another look at it, and I want to uh, share with you uh, what I feel are some other truths that we can gather from Ephesians chapter number 6, verse 13, and verse 14, uh, uh, verse 13, verse 14. I'm going to read it again. We've read it, but I want to read it again. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Now we have the word stand here uh, uh, triple times. Uh, you can underline it. Uh, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Uh, you want to underline withstand, because that's going to be important. I'll be using it inexchangeably in the message. Uh, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. So uh, the Apostle Paul uh, uses uh, multiple times the word stand. Uh, because it is important. Uh, I think probably uh, the thinking of the Apostle Paul was that uh, those of us who are children of God, because he is writing to the church at Ephesus, he is writing to the church at Ephesus, and he is instructing the church at Ephesus that the time is going to come when you're going to need the wherewithal to be able to stand as you deal with the vicissitudes of life. And so Paul is very clear on this, uh, and he uh, is uh, duplicitous in uh, talking about stand because he, mentioned it, uh, he mentions it at least three times, withstand, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Which means that you're going to need reinforcement. And there's going to come times in your life as a child of God. And if you're not a child of God, you need to listen carefully. And if you are a child of God, you also need to listen very carefully. Because, the, it, and it does not matter who you are, it does not matter where you're from, it does not matter who you might think you might be, if you're a child of God, you need to be clear on this. And that is, there will be vicissitudes in your life. There will be difficulties that will make, them way, make their way into your life. And you're going to need the wherewithal to be able to stand. You're not going to be, Paul is not talking about standing one time. Paul is letting us know that there will come times when we need to stand and then stand again and then stand again. And not only that, but he is making sure we understand that we have to withstand, which means the, the things that you stood against at one time, you may have to stand against those same things again. And he's also saying to those of us who are children of God, he is saying, listen uh, to the church, uh, at Ephesus is important for you to understand standing is important when it comes to the life of a child of God. Standing is important. Now, the reason standing is important is because Satan is a rowing lion and he's going about seeking whom he may devour. So Paul is saying withstand. You're going to have to not only stand, but you're going to have to withstand. And not only are you going to have to withstand, but you're going to have to stand, and then you'll find yourself having to stand again. So what he does here is he gives us a reason to stand. He gives us information that will assist us in our fight against the devil himself, because he is a roaring lion. And he comes at us in more than just one way. 
Now you, you say, well, I fought the devil last week. Well, if you were successful against the devil last week, then be certain that he is coming again. So if you stood against him and if you resisted him last week, be careful how you pat yourself on the shoulder because he is not finished with you yet. Because if you stood a full square against him last week, then he is going to come against you in another way. So, uh, so it, it's important, therefore, that those of us who are children of God, that we are clear on what it is and how we are to conduct ourselves in the face of adversity. How are we to conduct ourselves when the waters of adversity come against us and when the sea of life become tempestuous and when friends turn their backs on us, when we are, uh, are in a situation where we are being bombarded by backstabbers and backstabbers are out there. There are folk out there who will laugh in your face and stab you in the back. So you may have gotten over it one time, but Paul, being repetitive here, is saying to you, you may have to stand more than one time. And so he says, having stood therefore, then just keep on standing. Yeah. Now I need, to, I need to introduce to you a, uh, a term, a couple of terms that uh, I need you to pay attention to. Uh, because I'm going to be emphasizing uh, the, uh, the uh, essentiality of the terms that I'm going to give you. Now the terms that I'm going to give you are two, and it's, and, and it's called irreducible complexity. Irreducible complexity. Everybody say irreducible. Complexity. Now you got two big words, you see. If you didn't learn anything from church, at least you learned two big words this morning. And it's called irreducible complexity. Let me explain it to you and simplify it so as uh, you don't think that I'm trying to uh, get above you uh, academically or uh, intellectually. Irreducible complexity. Now, the term irreducible complexity is a system. It is a system. It is a system that uh, requires certain other systems or components that are necessary for the system to operate. Now, I may can be more simplistic than that. Uh, I don't know that I can. Uh, but uh, irreducible complexity is a system. It is a system that consists of certain component parts. And the unique thing about an irreducible our complexity is that if all of the parts in the system does not work and are not working, it renders the system ineffective. In other words, uh, this system, irreducible uh, complexity, this system demands that every system, every part works. And it works the same way, the same time, every time. And if any one of these component parts does not work, then the system doesn't work. That's irreducible complexity. Now the reason I went over that is because as those of you, those of us who are children of God, as we move through life, as you go through life, you're going to have to have a system 
by which you deal with whatever it is that you are dealing with. And not only must you have a system by which and through which you deal with your difficulty, you need to understand that you, that, that you need an irreducible complexity, which means you, you need an irreducible complex system which operates based on every component part working. And if every component part is not working and, and playing his part or its part, the system does not work. So what you and I need uh, as a child of God, you need an irreducible complexity uh, when it comes to dealing with life, uh, which gives us a clear picture of what it takes to be able to stand. To be able to stand, you, and let me simplify it further by saying, in order for you to deal effectively with whatever your problem is, you need a system. You need a plan that works all the time and does not change. You need a plan uh, uh, that you can go to knowing full well that you will get results, that you will get help in time of trouble and the plan that you have does not change. And you have faith in that plan because you believe that the plan works. And it doesn't just work sometime, it works every time. Now, that's a mindset. So those of you who may be going through difficulty, those of you who may be having problems in your life as a child of God, because as a child of God, it doesn't mean that you are exempt from problems. As a child of God, you remember the Church of Christ, but you still can have real problems in your life. And many times those problems come from folk in, in the church. So what you need to do is, you need to have an irreducible complexity that you use every day and every time. And the reason you need an irreducible complexity is that Paul says you not only have to stand one time, you may have to stand another time, and you may have to stand another time. So which means you need a system that works every time. Well, now God has given us. God has given us an a spiritual, irreducible, complex system. Uh, that's a system that we can depend on. That's a system that works in our lives as children of God every time and according to our needs. The 14th chapter of the book of uh, St. John and verse number 23, you may want to write that down. St. John, the 14th chapter, and verse number 23, uh, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins on the cross, speaks. And what does he say? Jesus answered and said unto him. Jesus answered and said unto him. If a man love me. Now watch this. If a man loves me. He will keep my words. He will keep my word. Watch the word now. If a man loves me and keep my word. And my father will love him. And my father will love him. And we will come unto him. And we will come. What I'm, what I'm developing here is an irreducible complexity. Every child of God, uh, even though the words may be big, uh, I, I'm saying to you, you need a system. Uh, because you cannot deal with life by yourself. You, you, you cannot uh, conquer life by yourself. You need help. And, and, and the kind of help you need should be, must be irreducible. And that is, you need the kind of help that you can go to when you need it, and that help works every time. Now, we have a guarantee for that. 
You have a guarantee for that. And this is, what, this is why our members of the body of Christ should rejoice, because we do have a uh, uh, irreducible complex system that God has set up for us. If a man will love me and keep my word, my father will love him. Will love him. And we will come to him. And we and we will come in unto him and make our and abode, make our with, abode him. with him. What are you doing, preacher? I am developing for those of us who need help, spiritual help. Help that your friend cannot give you. Help that you need when all else fails. You need to be able to go to someone. You need to be able to go somewhere that you can receive the kind of help that you need and help is always available. Yes, sir. David understood that. David says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. And, 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 and you see, uh, 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 David had irreducible help. I'll get to him if I have a minute uh, as we move forward. David had irreducible help. That is, when he needed help, he went to the Lord. And, and not only did he go to the Lord, but he recognized, believed, and had faith in the Lord. He had faith in the system because David knew that the source of help that he needed came from the Lord and that help did not change because David understood that whatever God said, God would do. And so uh, God has given each of us God has given you uh, an irreducible complex system. So uh, what I'm trying to say to you is, uh, even though you are members of the Church of Christ, and even though you are members of the body of Christ, and even though you have been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, just know that does not exempt you from trials and tribulation. That does not, your membership in the body of Christ does not exempt you from being stabbed in the back. Uh, you're being a member of the body of Christ does not exempt you from folk uh, uh, trying to assassinate uh, your reputation. So what you need and what I need is an irreducible complex system. What you and I need, we need a system in our lives, a system of course in quotes, we need a system in our lives that we believe if we go to and if we tell our troubles to this system that God has set up, help will then be on the way. Uh, but that depends on faith. And I'll get to that, uh, of course, uh, in just a minute. Now, in John chapter 14 and verse number 26, uh, you need to write that down. John chapter 14 and verse number 26. Because what I'm doing here, I'm establishing an irreducible complexity. I am saying to all of the believers uh, that uh, trouble will come, and trouble will come at a time you do not expect it. Uh, you may have overcome this trouble one time, but that doesn't mean that the same trouble won't come back. So having stood one time doesn't mean that you will not have to stand again. Yeah. And having stood the second time, it doesn't mean that you will not have to stand again. So you fought one time, and you thought you, could, thought you defeated that devil. You fought again when he showed up again. And then you fought again when he showed up again. Well, uh, he will constantly come. But if you have an irreducible complexity, if you have something within you that God has given you, and you have faith in that, you can defeat the devil every time. Yeah. Now, in the 14th chapter of the book of St. John, and if you write that down in verse number 26, I want you to read that. What does the Bible say? But the comforter. Watch this. Now, if there ever was a verse, listen to me carefully. If there ever were a verse in the Bible that proved and showed uh, the, the Trinity, and, and that is the doctrine of the Trinity, to yeah. which we believe. Yeah. See, we believe... We believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we believe that. And we believe that 
uh, the Trinity is made clear in the Bible. Now the word Trinity does not appear in the Bible. That word does not appear in the Bible. But what does appear is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, and they are three. Now what I'm saying to you is you really don't need a lot of verses. If you remember this verse, uh, you'll do well in explaining the Trinity. When, when, when those who are in denominations will say to you that there was only one, there was only one, there was only one, there's no three persons, only one. Well, this is the verse you need. Uh, and this verse will assist you as you deal with those who have a different idea about the Trinity of God. Now watch what the Bible says. The Bible says, but, but the comforter, now that's one, that's one. You see, the comforter is the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, I'm going to go away and I'm going to send to you a comforter. And he's going to be with you and he's going to be in you. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit there is the comforter. Uh, and the comforter is the Holy Spirit. That's one. Yes, sir. All right. Now the Bible says what? Which, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father which will is the Which is the Holy Ghost. Now that's, that's one. All right, and then the Bible says, Whom the Father whom will the see Father, in my name. Whom the Father, that's two. That's two. What are you doing, preacher? I'm, pre I'm proving that there are three in the Godhead. Yes, sir. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And I'm, I'm also simplifying it by telling you, that you don't need but just one verse. And, and this is the verse. You can just circle that one. And, and if, you ever, uh, if you ever have a conversation with, the, with, with those in the Jesus-only denomination, then, of course, you've got that circle. And if you never need to refer to it, uh, you, you've got it circled. Now, the Bible says, but the comforter, uh, which is the Holy Ghost, that's one, whom the Father, that's God the Father, yes, that's sir. two, whom the Father will send in my name. My name. That's Jesus. Because you see, Jesus is the speaker. And Jesus says, now, uh, the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, shall teach you all things. Now, that's three. If you can count the three, that's three. Well, wh why are you dealing with that, Brother Preacher? Because I'm trying to develop in your mind and in your heart and give you a mindset that will help you as a believer as you deal with the vicissitudes of life. Yes. In other words, I'm trying to show you that, whether you know it or not, I'm trying to show you that you have a spiritual, irreducible complexity that works the same way all the time. You see, you have, a, you, you, you have heaven working for you. And when you pray to God for help and for substance, Substance, God will give you what you need for what you need it for. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit dwells in you, according to Romans chapter 8. Jesus Christ dwells in you, according to Romans 8. God the Father dwells in you. That's according to Romans chapter 8. So uh, the Father dwells in you. Uh, the Master, Jesus Christ, dwells in you. And the Holy Spirit dwells in you. So what do you have? Well, you have an irreducible complexity. It's really what you have. Because I've explained to you what that is. And, and that is a, a system of, of complex parts that works the same way every time. And one, uh, and the system does not work if one of the components in the system does not work. So what does that mean? That means whatever, whatever God says, Jesus says. Whatever Jesus says, the Holy Spirit says. Because they don't work against each other. So then as a believer, and as you go through life, you have in you, you have dwelling in you an irreducible complexity. You have three that dwells in you. The Father, the Son, yeah. and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So what a joy it is to know that you have uh, not only the Comforter, but you have the Father, and of course, you have Jesus Christ dwelling with you. Now, not only are they dwelling with... Uh, Deuteronomy 31. Deuteronomy 31 uh, and verse number 6. We'll, we'll take a look at that. 
But uh, not only uh, do they dwell in every believer, not only do they dwell in every believer, but they assure us. You see, if you're a child of God, uh, this irreducible complexity, uh, the indwelling of the Godhead. Now, the, this spiritual irreducible complexity is nothing more than the Godhead yes, that dwells in every child of God. And the reason I'm driving this is because you're going to need that help more than once. And so if you're going to stand and then have to stand and then stand again, you're going to need help to do that. Yeah, yeah, and not yeah. only do you, are you going to need help, but you're going to need help uh, from, uh, uh, from a source that does not change. You, you, the, the help you need comes from above, but not only is it coming from above, but it's heavenly help and it does not change. Yes, Each sir. part of this spiritual irreducible complexity works the same way every time. God does not promise you one thing today and take it back tomorrow. Because one thing about God is he cannot lie. Not only that, but he does not change. Now, even in the Old Testament, even in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy, whatever I said here, Deuteronomy 31 in verse number 6, uh, the Bible says, Be strong. Now, see, not only does this irreducible complexity in you, which is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, uh, but you are assured that help is on the way. You are assured that you have this help. Yes, sir. And, and what, what are you doing, preacher? I'm trying to give you a mindset. I'm trying to uh, help you uh, understand that even though the vicissitudes of life, even though the tempestuousness of your life uh, come upon you, you have help, and it's heavenly help, and it's help provided yes, sir. irreducibly by the Father, by the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Uh, and so that's what gets you through your difficulty, because your difficulty uh, will surely come. I think I call Deuteronomy 31 verse and verse number 6. This is the assurance that you get. So you see, this is the assurance that God gives. This is the assurance that God gives every child of God. This is the assurance that you have as you go through life as a child of God. Uh, and God does not change. Here's what he says to you. He says, be strong. And of good courage. And of good courage. Fear not. Fear not. Nor be afraid, nor of, be them. afraid of them. For the Lord, For the thy, Lord God, thy God. He is he, he that, is that good with, go thee, with thee. And he will not fail thee nor forsake thee. You see, that's what this inward constituency does for every believer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For every believer. You are not in this fight by yourself. No, sir. No, sir. Now, uh, you may have friends who you would love for them to help you, but they're not able to help you because this may be a spiritual battle. And if it's a spiritual battle, you need spiritual help. If it's a spiritual battle, you need heavenly help. And, 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 and in, this, in this complex system, because you can't explain, uh, you cannot explain uh, the, the Father, uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, and Jesus Christ in a way that uh, the earthly mind will clearly understand that uh, because God is too complex for that. I think I told you the other day that uh, there is only one God. There is only one God. But Jesus is God, the Holy Spirit is God, and the Father is God. But there's only one God. All right, God. What, what, kind of, what kind of arithmetic is that? What kind of math is that? I mean, how does one plus one plus one is not three? Well, that's because you're using a mathematical system. One, but in, 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 in the Bible, uh, in the spiritual realm, one plus one plus one equals one. Uh, praise the name of Jesus. I don't, I don't need you to say that. But, uh, so you need help, and you need spiritual help. So you do not need uh, to go home uh, from this service with, with the idea that there is no help for you. 
there is help for you. And, and, and the way to uh, receive that help uh, and to overcome the difficulty of life, uh, you have to put your faith in God. Now one more scripture, Hebrews 13, verse number 5, uh, where the Lord, where uh, the, uh, the apostle, uh, the writer of the Hebrew letter uh, quotes uh, that heavenly help, uh, which is God Christ and the Holy Spirit. And uh, the scripture makes known, uh, as quoted by the Holy Spirit, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yes, sir. You, you, you have that assurance. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yes, sir. So uh, going through whatever you're going through, you must not believe, uh, you must not think that there is no hope for me. There, there, there is help for you. And not only that, uh, it helps your endurance. It helps your endurance. Now, the reason I said it helps your endurance, because you see, there are some things that gets on your nerve. You see, there, there, there was, uh, just say amen when you can. Eh? You, you know, and, and there were some people that would get on your nerve. I, I don't want to stay with that except to uh, remind you that uh, you, you may feel, I got this, I got this, you know, I, I, I've conquered this, yeah, uh, but, but if you stay there long enough, uh, that's going to come up again. Uh, and so uh, what you need is heavenly help. Uh, and temptations and trials and tribulations, uh, if you will live godly, uh, you shall suffer persecutions. So persecutions uh, are, are going to come. But not only are persecutions are going to come, but uh, what I'm trying to teach you is you have assurance. And you have assurance from an irreducible complexity that does not change. It does not change. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That does not change. And with that mindset, you ought to be able to deal with the vicissitudes of your life. Don't ever think that God has forgotten me. Don't ever think that God doesn't know I'm going, I'm going through this. Yes, he does know uh, that you are going through this. And, and, and Paul is saying that you have to stand, not once, not twice, but sometime more than that. You have to stand. So you have to have an attitude because the same trouble might keep coming. The same difficulties might keep coming. The same devil might seem coming. The same devil does not go away. He may go away for an hour or two, but when you look up, he comes again. So Paul is saying, as a believer, you must not only uh, be satisfied with uh, defeating the devil and resisting the devil one time, just know that you have to do it more than one time, but don't be over much cast down because you have a system within you, a spiritual system within you that consists of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You may not know how you're going to get through this. You may not know when you're going to get through this, but here's what you know. Sooner or later, in God's way, he is going to take care of it. That's the attitude. And if you have that attitude, then you'll be able to deal with the vicissitudes of life. And, and, but it's going to take faith. Yes, you see, it's going to take faith. And I got to hurry here. It, it's going to take faith. It's going to take faith. You have to believe that. You have to believe that. Because if you don't believe that, you will become melancholy. If you don't believe that, you will become uh, desolate in your thinking. If you don't believe that, you will feel like there is no help for me. In other words, I have a problem that even God can't handle. You don't have a problem that God can't handle. Uh, if it's drugs, God can handle it through Jesus Christ. Whatever it is, if it's drinking, drunkenness, whatever it is, God can handle it through Jesus Christ. You don't have a real problem. Even though we may say, yes, I do, Brother Preacher, I have a problem. Not really. What you really need is faith in God. Because faith will get you through the front end and the back end. Uh, and, and it's important to understand that. And it's also important to understand uh, uh, this principle. Uh, and that is this. Um, I need to write this down. There are two kinds of faith. Now you may come up with a third kind, a fourth kind, but, I, for, but for my benefit and for the benefit of this message, there are two kinds of faith. 
the two kinds of faith. And you need to understand what those two kinds of faith are. Number one, the first kind of faith is delivering faith. Because see, I'm talking about standing. And, 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 and if I'm going to talk about standing, I have to show you how to be delivered. And if you're going to be delivered from whatever it is you're going through, you're going to need faith. But there are two kinds of faith. One is delivering faith. And the other is sustaining faith. You need to write that down. Delivering faith and sustaining faith. And you need to know the difference between the two. Because if you know the difference between the two, then you may think God has not answered me. While God may have answered you. But you don't understand the kind of faith you have to have to believe and know that God has answered you. So in order to do that and to be successful in standing, you need to know there are two kinds of faith here. The two kinds of faith that I need. One is delivering faith, and that faith is important. And the other one is sustaining faith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, you see that in the life of David. You see that in the life of David. Goliath over there ah, is saying, send me a man. And all of Israel is backing up, afraid to deal with Goliath. All right, sir. David is saying, I'll meet him. David believed that God would deliver him out of the hand of Goliath. So David had delivering faith. So he goes down by the, by the brook and he picks up five smooth stones and you know the story. Comes back, put him in a slingshot, put one in the slingshot, pulls it and hit the giant in his forehead. The giant fell. David walks up, took, his, took the giant sword and cut his head off. That's delivering faith. God delivered David. See, that's, that's one kind of faith. Uh, but there are difficulties that will come against you where you will need more than delivering faith. You will need sustaining faith. You remember that God ordained David when he was a young boy, 15 years old. But Saul was on the throne. But God had told David you are going to be the king of Israel. But he's only 15 years old, and Saul is on the throne. And of course, uh, uh, Saul had uh, evil spirits to come after him at times, and he was accosted by evil spirits, and they recommended to Saul, Saul that when the evil spirit showed up, send for David, because David was a musician, and David could play. And by David playing, it was soothed, uh, it soothed the heart of the king, King Saul. And David would play uh, for Saul. Uh, David would go to the kingdom, and before the throne, he would, he would uh, play for, uh, for king, uh, king Saul. Now, but David knew. David knew that at some point, that throne was going to be his. Because God had promised him the throne. Uh, God had appointed him. God had appointed him. Or God had anointed him. He had not appointed him, but he had anointed him. And, and, and that's a good subject to talk about, too, because some folk, you know, don't know the difference between uh, anointed and appointed. You know, you can be anointed, but not appointed. Uh, but that's a whole other subject. Um, but David knew that God had uh, uh, appointed him, uh, anointed him uh, to be king, over Israel. David knew at some point he was going to become king of Israel. He knew that. But in the meantime, he couldn't be king. He couldn't have the throne because Saul was on the throne. All right, sir. So then what David uh, went through, and to make a long story short, Saul became jealous of David. Somehow Saul figured out that this boy is going to be king. And so Saul became jealous of uh, David. And Saul tried to kill David. Uh, the Bible talks about the, the sword, uh, the spear uh, that, da that uh, Saul had. And he, threw that, and he threw that spear at David. And of course, through the providence of God, uh, the spear uh, did him no harm. Saul chased David all over the land of Israel. 
and David had to hide in caves to get away from King Saul. But David knew that at some point, God was going to anoint him as king. Now the only way for God to anoint David as king, David had to have sustaining faith. David had to keep believing, I don't know when, but God is going to uh, make me king of Israel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so when the king is throwing a, a, a spear at him, when, when the king uh, is sending men uh, to get David out of a cave uh, to kill David, David is hiding. He's hiding in caves. He's hiding in the woods. Well, what is he doing? He believes that God is going to do what he says. But in order for him to receive the kingship of Israel, he must not only have faith, he must have sustaining faith. You see what I'm saying? So there is a difference. Now, when he killed the liar, that was delivering faith. But if he, if he is going to get the, uh, the throne of Israel, he's going to have to have sustaining faith. That means he is going to have to keep believing. So that's what Paul, and I just got to my subject. So that's what Paul meant. When Paul said, uh, having done all to stand, stand therefore. You see what I'm saying? So David was standing therefore. David had already stood. He already believed God. He had already believed uh, that God would fight his battle because he, uh, God assisted him in the battle uh, uh, with Goliath. But now the king is after him. The king is, is, is trying to kill him. The king is throwing a spear at him, trying to kill him. Now God is not delivering. That's the point. I, I'm, I need to make this point. Over here, when he met Goliath, God delivered him. Yeah, yeah. But for 13 years, Saul tried to kill him. But for 13 years, God didn't deliver him from Saul. Saul kept on chasing him. God, Saul kept on trying to kill him. And it just looked like that there was no deliverance for David. Well, God had already delivered him. He believed, he believed that. But what he needed, watch this, what he needed to get on the throne, he had to have sustaining faith. He had to believe that the same God yeah, yeah, yeah. that was with him when he killed Goliath, that same God would be with him when God decided it was time for him to go on the throne. Now, you see, it may be, you see, it may be that the opposition that you are going through at this moment that you can't shake. Uh, you know, we go through trials and tribulations that we can't shake. You know, and every morning you wake up, you got the same problem here. And uh, 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 there's some folk that you get that, that, that doesn't seem you, you can get along with. Or there are certain things in your life that you can't seem to deal with. Certain things can come into your life. Listen to me carefully, uh, because this is a strong point. Certain things can come into your life that you can deal with. Yeah. But there are other things that might come into your life that you're not quite able to deal with. All right, sir. You see, there, there are difficulties that can come into your life that will cripple you. There are difficulties that will come into your life that will call all kinds of physical and mental and spiritual problems because of the weight, because of the weight, because of the weight. And, and that is, it's, it, it's a situation that may be comparable to every day every year, every week, same thing, like a hammer. I, I can't shake this thing. I'm not doing anything wrong. I, I just can't shake this. Uh, whatever it is, it happens. It happens. And you say, well, why is God not moving this? Why is God not moving this? Here's the key. And I got to quit. Uh, here is the key. Uh, Brother Preacher, I can't get over this. All right, sir. I, I just can't get over it. Sorry. Can't get over it. Uh, I tried. I, I, I can't get over it. 
I, I just can't get over it. Here's a lesson I'm trying to teach you, and that is David, through delivering faith, delivering, delivering, deliverance faith, killed Goliath. But his trouble with Saul for 13 years, right. he did not deliver him. Right. Now watch, that, watch this. You see, there are certain troubles All right, sir. that God expects you to outlast. All right. Oh, I said something right there. You missed it, but I said something. You see, there are some things you have to outlast. There were some things that God may or may not move in your life because he expects you to outlast it. You see, and, and that's, a, that's an important key. He expects you to outlast it, last it because you have everything you need to outlast it. You see, you have an irreducible complexity built in. And, and that irreducible complexity will work for you. Uh, it, it'll work for you immediately. It, it will work for you in, in the short term and the long term. It, but you're going to have to have the kind of faith it takes for the Godhead that dwells in you to work for you. There are some things in your life that you have to outlast. Just know that. Just know that you have to have an attitude that tells you and show you the difference between what I need to distinguish as those things I need to outlast. Because you see, God knows what you can stand and what you cannot stand. Yeah. And those things he has not moved. It may mean that those are the things that you have to outlast. Because you see, there are, there are oppositions that come into a believer's life. It could be schoolwork, it could be a school teacher, it could be a wife, it could be a husband, it could be a relationship, it could be a boyfriend, it could be a girlfriend, it could be an employer on the job. There's stuff that can come into your life yeah. that really bothers you, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. really get next to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and if you're not careful, you begin to wonder, why hasn't God moved this stuff? All right, sir. See, that's where you need sustaining faith. And, 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 and God knows how much you can stand. All right, sir. And if you are still in it, and still praying for it, and it hasn't moved, it may mean that God wants you to stand there for it. Yeah, yeah. And outlast the opposition. Because there were, there were kinds of difficulties, there were kind, and I'll finish this tonight. Uh, there are kinds of troubles that will come to a believer, that will come to a child of God, that you just have to outlast. Understand that. Just a, see, and the lesson of David is important. The lesson of David really says to you, I say, see, David didn't say, well, I'm going to kill Saul. And David had an opportunity to kill Saul. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He had an opportunity to kill God. But, but then he remembered that God said to him, be careful how you treat the God's anointed. Now, he, he may not be doing what he is doing, but you should be doing, but he's God anointed. And you be careful how you treat God's anointing. Right, and so what did David do? And for 13 years, David just kept running, and, and he stayed with the Lord. And then finally, after 13 years, Saul was killed in battle. And you know the story I told you about Saul and Jonathan and Mephibosheth. Uh, and then David ascended to the throne. So there were some things in your life that you may have to live with. That's the point I'm trying to drive to you. So, uh, uh, there are some things in your life you may have to live with. I don't want you to go through life blaming God. 
and not having faith in God because he hasn't moved something. Don't do that. It may be that God wants you to outlast that. Because God knows what he's going to do about your trouble. So he knows. He's going to handle your trouble. What he needs you to do is to outlast the trouble. See, God knew that Saul was, was a corrupt king. God knew that. And God knew he was going to move him. He knew that. Uh, uh, but the thing is, we have to have the kind of faith that's called sustaining faith. God hasn't moved it. But I have faith to believe that he will. And if he doesn't, he wants me to outlast it. I hope you got that. I hope you got that. Now if you're here, and, uh, and like I said, I'll finish this tonight if the Lord says so. Uh, if you're here this morning, and you're a child of God, and you are going through some things that just does not seem to move. It just do, it does not seem to move. It does not seem to get any better. Well, this is where your sustaining faith should take over. And just see it as something that God wants you to outlast. Because if you keep living and you maintain faith in him, God in his own way will change the situation. And if he does not change it, it is because he wants you to outlast it. And how do you outlast it? You outlast it through sustaining faith. And how do you do that? Well, remember the old rhyme. He may not come when you want him. All right, son. <laughs> but he's always on time. Don't think God uh, is picking on you. God is picking on me. God's mad with me. It may very well be that all you need is faith in God. And a sustaining faith. Let God turn it over to the Lord. Let him handle it. Because God knows the bearing weight of your shoulders. He knows what you can handle. And he's not going to put more on you than you can handle. And it may be that something better is down the road if you just hold on. Now, I can really, really deal with that. Uh, but time would not allow. Uh, you be, just be careful how you step out you know, of the traces. Just be careful how you say, I'm through with you. I'm, I'm, I'm through. Through is not a word. Uh, the word is through. <laughs> I'm through with you. I'm through with you. I do, I'm, I'm through with this. And, and I, I tell you where all of you should go, as far as I'm concerned. All right, now. Watch it now. All right, sir. But that's the way it is sometimes. You know, we come to the point where we get fed up. Say amen when you can. I know you're dressed up looking like a Christian, but yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Before you jump out of the traces, before you do something desperate, desperate, just kind of wait on the Lord. And just remember, they that wait on the Lord. But I'm not talking about just waiting. And, 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 uh, and believe in nothing going to happen. Well, Doc, I'll wait, I, but I don't believe nothing going to happen. No, no. You need sustaining faith. I believe God is going to take care of this situation or he's going to fix me so I can handle the situation. So just have not just delivering faith, but sustaining faith. And when time comes to stand, Paul said, having done all to stand, stand therefore. Yeah, yeah. It's sustaining faith. It's going to be all right. 
you're going to be able to handle it. That's what I'm saying. Whatever it is, if you're a child of God, if you're a Christian, you will be able to handle it. All you need is faith in God. And God bless you. And if you don't have the kind of faith, you need to get the kind of faith. And, and if you need strength for us to pray for you, that God will give you that sustaining faith. It's not that you don't believe. You believe. It's just that you've been in this, been in this situation so long until you just believe that God has forgotten about you. No, no, he hasn't forgotten you. God had not forgotten that he promised David the throne. Well, what about when David's trying to kill me, throwing a spear at me? What about when David has me running uh, all through the woods and hiding in caves? I mean, what, what God is saying is, hold on! Yeah, yeah. Help is on the way. You just need faith in God. And God will come into your life. And not only that, but the scripture says he will, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Yes, sir. He's always there. All we have to do is have faith to believe that he's there. And if you're a child of God, if you're a Christian, and you want the church to pray for you, that God will give you what you need for what you need it for. And if you're not a member of the Bible, uh, the Church of Christ is in the Bible. Here's what you need to do. And if you want this irreducible complexity that God gives all those that are his. And this irreducible complexity that God gives to us is the indwelling of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And, and these three will come into your life and give you what you need for what you need it for. All you need is sustaining faith. Don't lose your faith. Don't lose your faith. And if God has not moved it in a visible way, don't give up because, he's had, because he may have something better for you on the other side. Now, if you believe Jesus Christ to be the Son of God, and if, you, if you're willing to repent of your sins and say yes to Jesus, if you're willing to confess with your mouth what your heart believes, and that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God, if you're willing to be baptized for remission of your sins, God will add you to the church. And we will baptize you this morning. And the angel will write your name in the Lamb Book of Life. Have you been baptized for remission of your sins? Have you been added to the church that you can find in the Bible? Do you need the Lord in your life to strengthen your sustaining faith? You need the Lord in your life to help you with delivering faith. Believing that God is going to take care of this. And if he doesn't take care of it, he's going to give me what I need so I can sustain my faith and keep my hand in his hand. I would ask you to say yes to Jesus. I would ask you to say yes to the Lord. Yes, sir. And we're going to do that by extending to you the invitation to come to Jesus Christ. Is there anybody here that needs the Lord? Right. Is there anybody here who want to say yes to Jesus? This is the time. All right, sir. Not tomorrow. Mm. But today is the appointed day. This is the day salvation. We're going to give you an opportunity to do, that, to, do, to do that. I ask you to please stand. While you are standing, walk down these aisles. Yes, sir. We'll pray for you. I'll baptize you. <laughs>